Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Excuse me. Here we go, Jerron Ennis. It's about time. Finally got some movement on this guy, man. So, several articles have been published talking about what's going on with Jerron Ennis. But the bottom line is, with everything going on with uh, Canelo Alvarez and him possibly fighting Jaime Munguia, let me tell you something. They may be putting Jerron Boots in this on that May 4th pay-per-view card as a co-main to Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. And if they do that, that is definitely the move to make. Jerron Boots in this gets all the visibility in the world, like what he got when he fought on Javante Davis undercard. And then he decided that he was bigger than what he was and tried to do something on his own. You know, anyway, coming back full circle, they're handling this man the way they should. Now, now, first I want to make this clear. While, uh, and I'm kind of skimming over this article at the same time, right? While Alvarez and Munguia stand as Alvarez's first all-Mexican Cinco de Mayo bout since 2017. Now, I remember back in the day he fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. where he made that man damn near, you know, kill himself just to make weight for the fight. Uh, PBC trying to stay afloat and they're trying to get an audience beyond the Latino-based uh, life lifeblood supporters, which we know that. But bottom line is this, right? When you talk about what, what can be done to get beyond the Latino-based support, uh, support supporters, right? It's to get goddamn Jerome Boutsinis on that fight card. Because let me tell you something, man. When you're talking about not just unbeaten, not just about someone who dominates, Jerome Boutsinis can give the type of fight to all fans, in particular the diehard Mexican fans, an all-out mashup, crash-up, if he chooses to, and make it look relatively easy. Now, what better opponent for the 31 know with 28 knockouts in us than Cody Crowley, 22 wins, zero losses, nine kills. Let me tell you something. This fight is going to purse bid, and Cody Crowley will be challenging Jerome Boots in us. But the reason why I think this is a good fight, I do I think Jerome Boots in us tranquilizes him, it's because Cody Crowley is coming straight ahead. He's not trying to float like a butterfly, sting like a bean, he, like a bee. He's looking for the Canadian mashup, crash up, and to put the Ontario bean beans on Jerome Boutsinis. And let me tell you, that fight, if they put it on that undercard with Canelo and Munguia, let me tell you, man, when they get to Canelo and Munguia, they're, they're going to be primed up. And I don't think Canelo and Munguia is going to live up to what Jerome Boutsinis and Cody Crowley does. Now, I say that to say this. I think Mungia is going to try to bring the bing, bings up in the ring against Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez more looks for the single shot, high guard, walk you down, hit you with some... some what, what Canelo's done is he's figured out what works for him, and he does that very well. But this is shit. Canelo hits Mungia with a hard shot. Mungia's coming back with 8 to 10 in combination. So, it's going to, I still think that even if Canelo tries to slow it down with the single shots, I think Munguia is just naturally wired to go for the mashup, crash up, and give the fans an exciting fight. But I still think Jerome Boots, Ennis, and Cody Crowley can give a more entertaining fight than Canelo and Munguia because Canelo's not going to stand there and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jerome Boots, Ennis will. Cody Crowley will. Munguia will. Canelo's not going to do that. It, them days of him standing trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone, I don't even think he's ever had those days, unless he has an advantage. Canelo will move around the ring, try to use intelligence, and set you up for a big shot. But against Munguia, this, who's going to come at him nonstop, you may find Canelo more in defense mode, and as a result, the crowd will, will boo Canelo. That's just how I see it. I don't mind being wrong, but I'm normally, you know, I'm normally pretty goddamn right. But that being said, man, uh... Boxing scene had an informal survey done, so they expect Canelo Alvarez and Munguia to get pay-per-view buys between 600000 and 800000 But when you have a guy like Jerome Boots Ennis and Cody Crowley on the card as a co-main, they're expecting tapping into the urban audience and could possibly get those numbers over $1 million in pay-per-view sales. Now, can they do that? You know, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? But what I will tell you is, when you talk about Jerome Boots Ennis, if they, if they market him the right way and build his fight the right way, they can build, they, they can kind of use 
a comparison with Jerome Boots Sinners and Roy Jones Jr. And I think that would really not just tap into the urban market, the young market, but you can get the older guys like me, 48 plus, who say, shit, remember Roy Jones Jr.? And if they didn't know who Jerome Boots Sinners is, it forced them to stop and take a look and to see what the hell's going on with them. But that being said, don't know what's going to happen. But what I do know, that's how you put together a super solid fight card. In addition to that, you look at what's going on with Tim Zhu, Keith Thurman, with Rowley, and Pitbull Cruz. It kind of done the same thing there where you got the Australian market, you got Keith Thurman with the urban market, then you got the Latin market with Pitbull Cruz and also with Rowley Romero because he's half Cuban, half black. But then you also kind of tap into that urban market with, with Rowley. So you kind of, you know, hit all stops. And as a result, could in turn see a very favorable pay-per-view sales. Now, that being said, I look forward to it. I hope that they can make that fight and they can go and get put on that card. But it's going to purse bid, man. I think uh, it said it's going to purse bid uh, on March 19th. It says, Ennis is awaiting a March 19th purse bid for his mandatory title fight against Cody Crowley. The purse bid winner will decide where and when Ennis Crowley will occur. Will occur. So it says, should PBC win, his preference is to place Ennis in the co-main. All of that sounds good to me. We just got to wait and see if it happens. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans. Seven consonants. I'm going to go finish watching this boxing. I'm in the breeze.